My scoutmaster used to boil water in an old coffee can with a piece of wire attached for a handle. He'd throw it right on top of the coals in the campfire, uh, and then simply grabbed a handful of coffee grounds, tossed it in there, grabbed a stick off the ground, stirred it up, and then poured the whole concoction into his coffee cup, grounds and all. That is cowboy coffee. <laughs> Hello friends and welcome to another episode of Trailer Trash Adventures. Today we are going to look at different ways to make coffee in the RV and how to brew that perfect cup to kickstart your great day of camping. Now I'm not a coffee snob, but I am a coffee addict. I refuse to start my day without a cup or two or three. Now I'm not too bougie to use a Keurig machine, but sometimes I just crave something a little bit different. I don't require fancy, expensive beans. <clears throat> I just need something with flavor, but not too bitter. I drink my coffee black, so I can't cover up wheat coffee with cream and sugar. I've tried several types of coffee makers, and although each has their own pros and cons, I've narrowed it down to two that I think work best for me. Now, by no means is this list all inclusive, and I encourage you to add your favorite method in the comments below. Now, before we get started, Let's quickly talk about what we're not going to cover here, and that would be drip coffee makers and instant coffee. Now, I'm not too good for instant coffee, and if you've ever tried Starbucks Via instant coffee, it's actually not that bad. As far as the drip coffee goes, my camping style runs about 50-50 between hookups and dry camping, so I'm looking for something non-electric that will work whether or not I have hookups, with one exception, as you will see. Now... Let's begin with the beans. To grind or not to grind. When I'm at home, I rarely grind my own beans. But when camping, my coffee making becomes a bit more ritualistic, which means grinding my own beans. <clears throat> when I first got my travel trailer, I was such a newbie. I only had one battery and no experience to tell me how long it would last. So my mission was to find every USB rechargeable gadget that I can find. And that included coffee grinders. Now, my first attempt at finding a USB-powered coffee grinder was this guy right here. I don't even know the brand name of the Mix Espresso brand. And to be honest, I really wasn't that happy with it. Um, it is a USB rechargeable. You can plug your, uh, looks like a USB mini, a micro USB, plugs right on the end there. And you can fill this up with a little bit of beans, not very much. That's however much you can fit in there. That's it. It's not quite enough to fill a regular coffee maker. And it grinds really slow. I don't think there's any battery left in this thing, but it grinds really slow and it doesn't grind very fine. So I was pretty unimpressed with this and uh, quickly moved on to something else. Now, next I figured, okay... If the USB rechargeable ones aren't any good, let's try a hand crank one. Then I got this one, and this one's actually fantastic. It works really good. The handle comes off. You can crank. Let's see, you pour. Where do we do? Pour the beans in the top there. The top goes on. And this basically acts as a reservoir for the coffee. Then on you go. It actually works pretty good. Um, I'm happy with it. It does. It goes pretty slow, though. I, this is great for you know having not to deal with any kind of power whatsoever. Um, but um, it's a little slow, and so I I did come across another USB powered one that actually I'm pretty happy with. It. And this that's this one. I don't know how to pronounce the brand. It's uh, Demo Fuahai. I don't know. Let's see if you can read that. You can tell me what that, how to pronounce that. I have no idea. But I got this on Amazon. I think the first USB-powered one I got was like 20 bucks. 
So, of course, it's not going to work very good, right? But I got this one, and it was only like 30 or 35. And this one actually works pretty good. You've got your reservoir here. Just pour the beans in there. Pop that on top. And simple as that. You can see it has a it has a, a gauge to tell you how much juice is left in the battery. Right there. And it works pretty well. Just pour the grounds. It works more like a traditional one where you're uh, not going from one uh, cavity inside the uh, uh, grinder to another one. It all goes in the same one. Just like uh, I've got like an, uh, I've literally got like a 30 year old Black & Decker one I use at the house that works pretty good, very similar. So that is my journey with the grinders. So the first thing we're going to look at is my one exception to the no electric coffee maker rule. And this would be this guy right here, the Keurig Mini. I mean, it's too easy and simple not to include it. It makes a marginal cup of coffee, but if I've got full hookups and it's a travel day, guess what I'm using? This guy right here. Simplicity, very small profile, fits anywhere, and uh, works great. Only does one, only holds enough water for one cup at a time, but simple enough, easy to use. And if you can find some decent K-cups, like uh, the Black Rifle Coffee K-cups, then you can actually get a decent cup out of it. So the Keurig Mini is my go-to when I have full hookups and I need to go quickly. Next up on the list is something that I haven't had in a very long time, and I don't even have an example uh, here for you. But that would be Cowboy Coffee. Now you might ask, what the hell is Cowboy Coffee? Well, when I was in Boy Scouts, and yes, I was in Boy Scouts, my Scoutmaster used to boil water in an old coffee can with a piece of wire attached for a handle. He'd throw it right on top of the coals in the campfire, uh, and then simply grabbed a handful of coffee grounds, tossed it in there, grabbed a stick off the ground, stirred it up, and then poured the whole concoction into his coffee cup, grounds and all. That is cowboy coffee. Now, next up, we're going to look at the most traditional form of camp coffee, and that would be the old school percolator. Now, the way this works is really simple. You can cook, you can put this on your stove top, you can put it on a camp stove, you can put this directly on the campfire, or you can put it on a grate above a campfire. So, uh, easy to use, very versatile, simple. <clears throat> put your coffee grounds in here, fill this full of water. As the water boils, it goes up through this little tube drops the hot water and filters through the bottom. And some of these have a little glass dome on top so you can actually see the coffee percolating. Um, I've had many of these and that glass dome always breaks and so my newest one did not have the glass dome. Uh, I kind of like the idea of the glass dome because it's easy to, to see when the coffee's done but you just pop it up a little bit and you can see it, uh, you can see the coffee. And you just basically tell by the color of the water that's coming through the spout here. When it's first starting to brew, it's obviously the water is, is clear and clean, and then it becomes darker and darker as you go. So uh, I have used this several times camping. Um, I haven't used it on a campfire in a long time, but I have used it on a little jet boil stove that I do bring with me from time to time, and it works pretty well. Now, next on our list is what I've used on most of my RV trips, and that would be the French press. Now, with the French press, um, <clears throat> simple, easy, good tasting coffee. This particular one is glass, and so obviously when we're dealing with glass in an RV, that can be a problem. But I've taken this one on many tri trips. It is reinforced by this outer plastic casing. Um, I haven't had any problems yet. This is a relatively small one. But I've had this one for well over 20 years, used it at home, used it on, on tent camping trips, and now use it in the RV. Um, simple, fill it full of hot water, pour the coffee grounds in, stir it, let it sit for a, a couple of minutes. And that is the hardest part, is just sitting there looking at that, that coffee seep, uh, or steep, I guess they call it. Um, and then... 
uh, after a couple of minutes, let the uh, the water absorb, absorb the grounds, and then then we press it down. And you got enough for two or three cups here. This is fantastic. I love it. I've used it quite often. The biggest problem that was cleaning this thing is a pain in pain in the butt. Um, coffee grounds get all over the place. They get stuck on here. Obviously, they get caked down at the bottom. You can use a paper towel and get rid of most of it. But the biggest problem I found with this is I always end up getting coffee grounds in the sink. And if you know anything about RVs, you don't want coffee grounds to go down in the sink. You don't want coffee grounds. You don't want anything in your gray tank other than soapy water. Um, I've cleaned out my gray tank a couple of times and was shocked at the kind of gross stuff that gets down in there. So you always want to do anything you can to avoid getting any food particles or coffee grounds down in your down in your gray tank. So for that reason, I decided to keep on looking for a better solution for my RV coffee. However, I'm a big fan of the French press. Next would be one of my favorites for making a great tasting espresso-like brew. And that would be the mocha pot. Now, in coffee snob circles, this is not considered espresso uh, because it's not compressed under pressure. Uh, however, um, it does create an awful lot of pressure in the boiling uh, compartment down on the bottom to the point where it even has a pressure relief disc. Uh, um, heat the water up, <clears throat> water drips from the top, and uh, per kind of percolates up to the top. It's hard to see inside there, but... Uh, the coffee goes in the bottom compartment, does not require a filter of any type. I'm just going to pack this little bowl with espresso grounds, and you must use espresso grounds. So uh, something like these guys right here, or if you have the ability to grind with your grinder to a true espresso uh, ground. I don't think these <clears throat> rechargeable ones have that ability to get it that fine. I'll, honestly, I've never tried it. If I want to go with an espresso type mix, I definitely go with some of the pre-ground espresso beans. But pack that right in there. Drop it in the top. This thread's on. And you just put it on the stove top for you know, however long it takes for you to start seeing that golden brown goodness start coming through the top there. Obviously, this is only good for a couple of cups, and it's only going to be a couple of cups of espresso-like coffee. We can't call it espresso. Uh, but you can also you know, pour this into a coffee cup, add about eight ounces of hot water, and then you've got kind of a standard coffee. So, fantastic. This one's very small. They do make bigger ones. I think if I had a bigger one, I would probably use this more often. Uh, it's just two cups isn't enough for me, even with espresso. And... Again, you're dealing with cleaning out the coffee grounds. Now, you are dealing with a much finer ground, uh, grind, I guess, and uh, you can clean this out pe pretty good with paper towels, so it's not that big of a problem, and I do use this quite often, but still not my perfect coffee solution. Next up would be the newest addition to my camping coffee maker collection, and that would be the AeroPress. Now, the way this works, it's, it's kind of almost a combination between a mocha pot and a French press in the sense that it, it does create sort of an espresso-like coffee, but instead of being designed to drink it as espresso, you're actually supposed to add water to it after the brew to create a standard coffee. And I don't have a coffee cup handy, but the way this works, take this apart, you've got a paper filter, right here that goes on the top <clears throat> drop your brew I mean drop your uh, your grind down inside there fill it with water and it's got a little graduated kind of a not a graduated but it's got a little marker on the outside to say how much water to put in then you can simply put this right on top of your coffee cup and just slide it down and you can add enough for multiple cups of coffee. And again, it's designed to create sort of a uh, espresso-like brew, which you can then add water to and create a cup of coffee. Super simple, super easy, great for tent camping or, or in a situation where you don't have a lot of room. Um, however, again, you're just making one or two cups at a time. 
I'm a big coffee drinker. I need something that's going to produce a little more coffee so I can have my multiple cups without so much work. All right. So there you go. The AeroPress, definitely worth taking a look at. Super small, super compact. If I was still backpacking like I did as a kid, if I wasn't going to use instant coffee, I would absolutely use this. Okay, now last but not least is my new go-to coffee maker for RV camping, and that would be the pour-over. Now, you might take a look at this and say, that's a, that's a big piece of glass, not very good for RV camping, and I agree, um, but I like the style, I like the method, I like the way it produces the coffee, and I like the cleanup. There are different variations of these out there. There are some that aren't so full of glass. They're, they're, there are some that aren't glass like this one, so that might be one worth taking a look at. In fact, there are pour-overs that are similar to the AeroPress where they fit literally right on top of your coffee cup, and you uh, <clears throat> pour your grounds in, use a filter, and then uh, um, you can pour the uh, uh, water right on top of that. So the way this works is pretty simple. <clears throat> You've got your carafe. And you've got the filter strainer. However, again, if you just put the coffee grounds directly inside here, you're still going to have to deal with the messy cleanup. Uh, that's where you go with the paper filters. And this is kind of a proprietary filter, but they're easy to find. You can get them at uh, basically any grocery store. Walmart has them. They have them both in, the, I think, the coffee maker department and in the coffee department. Uh, so... This simply goes in here, you pour your beans right in the top, drop this inside the carafe, and then with your kettle that you heat water in on your, on your stove, whether it's a camp stove or uh, the uh, uh, burners inside your RV, your gas stove, you just pour the water over the top, let it saturate the beans. It's gonna take several pours because you can't pour a whole, you can't fill this whole thing up at once. Let the beans sort of absorb the uh, the water and let them drop down in. You're going to pour a couple of cups in at a time. Let it drop down. Pour another couple of cups, cups, and then you're ready to go. And here's the great part. You take the strainer off, and then this simply goes in the trash. No worries. Now, obviously, a lot of drip coffee makers are the same way, but this requires no electricity. Heat up the water in your in your uh, kettle inside your RV, <clears throat> pour the coffee in, or put the, put, the, put the filter in, put the coffee in, pour it over, and you're good to go. So this is kind of my standard right now. There's a little cap that goes on here, too, so you don't always spill it. But uh, pour it out. It's good for, I don't know, five or six cups of coffee, which is pretty much enough for me for a day. Um, I've traveled with this about four different times, and I haven't broken it yet. It is a concern being all glass, uh, but one thing that I found interesting about this is after I bought this, I, I, I picked this up because they had it at Walmart. I was looking on Amazon for a few different ones, and there was quite a few different ones in different price points. This one was like 30 or 35 bucks, and I thought, I want to try the pour over. Let's give it a shot. Um, worked fantastic, but after I started using it, I was watching a few other RV YouTubers and I saw that they use this exact same one. Now, obviously not all of them do, but a couple of them do. They don't always feature it. Sometimes I saw one uh, in the in the drying rack um, in a video one time. It, it had been washed and somebody was filming inside their, inside their uh, I think their Class A. And uh, they had obviously been using it and it had been... Uh, been washed but I saw other people actually go through the process of using this one so I'm not the only one um, it works great totally happy with it 30 35 bucks at Walmart um, and that is what works best for me I'll still go back and forth between some of the other ones especially the mocha pot but right now uh, I'm the happiest with that particular coffee maker so there you have it my personal journey through the world of camping coffee makers as I said earlier, this list is not all inclusive, and I hope to hear about your favorites in the comments below. Now, if you enjoyed this content, please subscribe, like, and share with your friends. Now, if you've got a moment, check out one of our other videos up here or here. Thanks for watching, and have a fantastic day.